Thank you. Um, Leader Schumer could not be here today because he is now headed back to New York for Yom Kippur, but I am very happy today to be joined by Senators Hirono, Blumenthal, Murphy, uh, Gillibrand, and White House may join us as well shortly. I want to make a few points about the status of Judge Kavanaugh's nomination to the Supreme Court. First of all, I'm glad Chairman Grassley has started to listen to members telling him he can't simply sweep this under the rug. It's not just going to go away, and I'm glad Republican leaders are starting to realize that. But scheduling a hearing for Monday, a week from when Dr. Ford made her accusations public, is a shameful attempt to jam this through without giving anyone the time they need to investigate and put together the questions that need to be asked. And think about this from Dr. Ford's perspective. She first talked about this publicly on Sunday. On Monday night, Republicans scheduled a hearing without talking to her or confirming with her or even giving her a heads up. Not only that, but right now, Republican leaders are trying to prevent any outside witnesses beyond Dr. Ford and Judge Kavanaugh from appearing, which be, would be unprecedented and wrong. And now some Republicans are already saying a vote will come a few days later. This is what happened in 1991 when the Senate got information in the middle of a process, a hearing was jammed in just days later, and you know what? I hoped we could do better 27 years later. Unfortunately, Republican leaders seem focused above all else on getting Judge Kavanaugh on the bench, whatever that takes, as quickly as possible. They should be focused on doing their jobs, making sure that we are scrutinizing this nominee and not rushing him into a lifetime appointment to the highest court in the land. We need a full, fair, robust investigation into these allegations of a serious criminal act. And only when that is completed should we bring Dr. Ford in for testimony and Judge Kavanaugh in once again, along with any other relevant witnesses. And that brings me to my second point. I am a United States Senator today because of the way Anita Hill was treated in 1991. I, along with millions of other women, watched in horror as an all-male Judiciary Committee interrogated berated and maligned a woman who was brave enough to speak up about an issue it would have been far easier for her personally to remain silent on. Some of them are still on this committee today. They called Anita Hill a liar. They said she was coached by special interest groups. They looked for ways to blame her, impugn her, and attack her. It was disgusting and it motivated women to vote to run for office and fight for change. Now, a whole lot has changed since 1991. The Me Too movement has sparked a greater awareness of the issues of sexual harassment and assault. Men and women across the country now understand more than ever, ever that women give up so much when they come forward and that the presumption should be that they are telling the truth. But a whole lot has not changed. The Republican side of the Judiciary Committee looks exactly as the committee did in 1991. All men. One committee member who led the attack on Anita Hill in 1991 is already saying Dr. Ford may be, quote, mixed up. And Republican media outlets are already trying to smear her. So I am here today to say, once again, women are watching. We are not going to allow that to happen again. If Republicans attack Dr. Ford and this turns into anything like what we saw back in 1991, women across the country are going to rise up, make their voices heard, and Republicans will pay a very huge price. Now, I am hoping that that does not happen. I am hoping that Republicans treat Dr. Ford fairly work with us to investigate this accusation fully and don't try to jam this nominee through. This is a test for the United States Senate on how we handle accusations of sexual harassment and assault. I am hoping this Senate passes it. With that, let me